This is the Influencer Entrepreneurs Podcast with Jenny Melrose, where I strategize with business owners on how to grow and scale their businesses to hit their income goals. This is episode 211 of the Influencer Entrepreneurs Podcast with Jenny Melrose. Today, we're going to be talking about how to launch a product online. Before we dive into that, though, I want to make sure that you take the time to hop over to the show notes and make sure that you grab your product starter guide so that if you're not really sure what you, how to outline your product, how to make sure that there's a funnel for it, what it should look like, that this guide will actually walk you through it. So if you are listening, take the time, definitely get over to the show notes and make sure that you download. It is a free guide that's really going to help you map out what your product should look like. Now, if you already have your product, that's perfect because as many of you know, I hosted a workshop that is still available to you if you want to take it for 2021, a revenue planning workshop, where we actually talked about this idea of understanding your revenue streams and the different products that you could possibly be offering, product or service for that matter. And we did some projections for numbers as far as revenue. So this is a great opportunity that if you looked at 2020, you looked at your numbers, you looked at what you were offering as revenue streams, and you've decided it is time for me to launch my own product or service, then this is going to walk you through it. So the first thing that I want to make sure that you understand is that when you are thinking about a product or service, you need to do some research to look to see what else is out there. Get an idea on pricing. You don't want to be the highest priced. You really don't want to be the cheapest priced either. And you want to kind of get in like a good fill for what it is that people are also offering that serves the same purpose as your product or service. Now, when you're going through and doing this, you want to see what it actually, what their product or service consists of. Is it a course? Is it an ebook? What, how many pages are in the ebook? How many recipes? If you're looking to do a recipe ebook, if you're looking to do a course, how much hours of content is there? What does it actually solve? What problem does it solve in that course? And is that clearly stated? You want to get a good feel for what else your competition is doing so that you can make sure that you are also filling that void. But remember, it doesn't matter that other people have similar products or services because what's going to sell it is you. I actually had a client reach out to me this morning who is a one-on-one -on -one coaching client. She reached out to me and said, what do you do when someone signs up for your email list and you know they're in direct competition with you? And my answer was, I leave it. I let them see what I'm doing because here's the thing. They can do exactly what I'm doing, but they're not going to have that personal touch of me. You are the person that sells what you're going to sell. So a lot of times I get people asking me, why, how do I get more people to look at my product or look at my opt-in? Well, you got to get yourself out there. You have to be able to create that personal connection with people. Many of you have reached out to me recently saying that you feel like you know me. You feel like you are connected to me because of the podcast, your voice, Anytime you do video, that's even more of a connection that people can create with you. So start thinking of ways that you can put yourself out there to truly create that relationship with your audience. Now, the thing that I want you to think about here is that maybe some of you are thinking, okay, I've got this idea for a product. I want to put it out there. Let me see what the, the, my competition is doing out there. And then I can put it out there. Here's the thing, though. You have to know your target audience for this product. If you are someone who was traditionally known for creating recipes that were free as a food blogger, and now all of a sudden you're going to turn and start talking about health or start even offering a product for sale, you have to teach your audience about this. You have to get them to see the value in that product and know specifically who it is meant for because it is probably not meant for every 
woman or man that comes from Pinterest over to get your recipe. You want to make sure that when you're creating your product or service, it is niched. It lets you show yourself as the expert. So if you are a vegan, gluten-free baker that has a food blog that has been giving away free recipes, you have to make sure that your ebook sets you up as the expert, shows how you have all the knowledge for them in baking on how to do it vegan and gluten-free. That is how you are going to set yourself apart. So truly knowing who your target audience is. If you are that vegan gluten-free baker that I'm giving as an example right now, your audience is someone that's vegan and wants to also do things gluten-free. Your audience isn't going to be the comfort food blogger that mm, has someone coming into town for an upcoming holiday and wants to make something for their company that's coming because that's not an ebook that they're going to want because it's not the ideal audience. They may want a recipe from your site to be able to make that special occasion dessert for that person coming to visit, but it's not your target audience. So get specific on who your target audience is so that once you do, you can start engaging that audience, which also means that you have to be able to find a way to get them on your email list. No matter the product or service, even if you have a brick and mortar that you're looking to launch an online product for, let's say you do organic health products, um, and I'm talking beauty products. If you typically had a brick and mortar and now you're looking to launch that online, you still need to have an email list of customers, of people that are your people. Now, if you're listening and you're a food blogger, I'm hoping that you know and understand this and are already providing your list or your audience with an opportunity to get onto your list with a freebie or an opt-in. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you absolutely need to make sure that you are growing that list with a freebie. Now, a freebie can be a guide, it can be a checklist, it can be a chart. It needs to be something valuable that is going to solve a problem. And it can't just be a random ebook full of all of your favorite recipes unless you are very, very niched. That's the only time you would ever do a recipe ebook like that is when it's very specifically niched. Otherwise, you're going to want to teach them something, show them how you are the person for them. So that if you are a gourmet um, at-home chef that is creating recipes for your audience that are gourmet, but are easy enough for them to be able to do, then what is it that you can show them that is going to be something that of value to them? Is it going to be that you can make gourmet easy? And here's some tips on how you can actually do it. And here's a couple of quick appetizers that show that it can be gourmet, but be made easy. That's an ebook that your audience would want. It's not going to be a random ebook just full of random appetizers that have no specific niche to them. So make sure when you're thinking about that freebie or opt-in, what is it that your audience wants so that you can engage your audience? Now, as you grow that email list, you have to be emailing them. You can't email them once every month and think that they're going to remember who you are or even so much as care. That is your opportunity. The way that you give me the opportunity to come into your ears each week through my podcast, you're giving them an opportunity to get to know you via your emails as often as you may send them out. So for those of you that are on my list, you know that I send three emails a week. I send those three emails because I'm talking about different topics. And I know that some of my listeners have missed some of the episodes because, well, 2020. Well, we missed a lot of different things in 2020, didn't we? Between quarantining and homeschooling our kids. So you really want to make sure that you grow that list, engage them, get them talking to you, ask them things in your emails to reply back to you. And then you can also use social media to be able to do that. So once you have this point where you have an engaged audience, you're asking for their opinion, especially if you're trying to think of a product, the best way to do it is to ask your audience. I always find get flabbergasted when clients come to me and they're like, what product should I create? And I kind of look at them and I'm like, well, it's got to be for your audience. It's not for me because if it was for me, 
I don't know that I'm actually even eating your audience. So talk to your audience, get them to tell you what it is that they want. What would they expect to see? What would solve the problem that they are having that you could provide them with as an expert. One of the best places to do this is Instagram stories. You guys know I love talking about Instagram stories. And the reason is because one, it's super easy to create a 10 second story. And two, they make it super simple to use it using polls to then continue the conversation in DMs. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to make sure that you go back to podcast episodes where I've talked about Instagram stories, it will enlighten you tremendously on how to use this. But you need to be talking to your audience, have them help you decide what to put into the product, what should not be in it, because that is going to increase the excitement. The next step is to create that excitement for the product. And the best way to do that is to be talking about it as you're writing it, as you're putting it together. When I wrote my book last year, I constantly was reaching out to my audience, letting them know certain pieces, letting them know where I was stalled, asking them questions about topics to get a better idea of if that was truly something they were struggling with, or if I was even using the right words to describe what I thought their problem was. You have to talk to your people because something that you may be calling it, let's say, for example, that gourmet food blogger I gave you before, maybe people don't think of the food as gourmet. They think of it as fancy. So the fact that you're using the word gourmet is totally throwing them off. But if you don't talk to your people and find out the language that they use, then you're never going to know that. And you're not going to be able to connect with them. In previous episodes, I have told the story when it came to product about one of my clients who actually built her entire product with the intention of creating an ebook. And then when she talked to her audience on Instagram stories, realized they don't want an ebook. They don't want to sit down and take the time to read it because they're busy moms. And that's who her audience was. Instead, they wanted a journal. And they told her exactly what they wanted in the journal so that when that product was done and as she's putting together and sharing with them, this is what's going to be in it. And this topic is going to be in it. And I'm going to give you this writing prompt and you're going to be able to really talk about your feelings and thoughts that you're having surrounding this topic. Well, when that journal came out, her people felt like they had helped create it. So they were more involved with it. And of course, they wanted it. They had gone into the, they had helped put it together. So really getting that excitement, continuing walking them through the process. If you're putting together spices and you're going to be shipping your own spices as your product, get people's feedback. Show them with you, you actually creating recipes using those spices. The process of picking out the labels. Get their opinion. What label should go on this bottle? You want to talk to them. Many of you remember I had you actually pick out my book cover. The book cover that is on Influencer Entrepreneurs is the picture that you all picked. Giving you that opportunity to actually help me choose made many of you feel more like you were a part of it and that your opinion mattered because it does. Because without you, Things wouldn't sell. You wouldn't want things. I would know how to solve your problems, but I'm able to solve your problems to the point where I get emails sometimes from some of you saying, how did you know I was thinking that? That was literally the words that I was thinking out loud to myself just yesterday. Well, it's because you've told them to me. I've pushed you to talk to me on Instagram. I've pushed you to reply to my emails. And in those emails, you've told me your problems. You've told me the things that you have struggled with. It helps that I also understand those struggles because you got to remember, I was in those footsteps. That is my journey as a lifestyle blogger. Before I started doing the coaching side of things, I built a lifestyle blog and had it to overcome many of the hurdles. So, when you're creating that product and service, if it's something that you're creating because you know it solves a problem that you had, much of the language that you're going to use and the way that you're going to talk about it is going to be from that standpoint of, I had that problem. So continue to use that language so that people truly, truly understand what it is that you are doing. All right, so the next piece, and a lot of people skip this step, and they just want to get the product out there. But you, after you get all this excitement, before you launch it, you need to set up a customer onboarding. I recently purchased a product from a small business owner in the Charlotte area 
that just blew me away with her onboarding. She, I was buying this organic beauty product and I got an email once my order was confirmed, letting me know when it would be delivered, when it would be shipped. Then when the box actually came, which was genius on her part, she had actual like little card stock inside of it, letting me know her Instagram so that I could tag her on Instagram when I shared all my new favorite products that just came in the box. And I can tell you what. I made sure to do that not once, but probably three or four times because she made it so simple for me. She made it beautiful that I wanted to take a picture of it to share it with everyone. So keep that in mind as part of your onboarding. Now, of course, that's a physical product. We're talking about shipping things. Well, the same thing should happen if you have a um, virtual product, a digital product, whether it's an ebook, a course, a workshop. They should be getting an email from you thanking them for signing up. And then how to actually go about getting into that product. And then once they're done, maybe downloading it, something else, you should have follow-up emails. How can they share it? How can they use it to the best of their ability? Ones that I've seen done really well are when you get a email directly after downloading something and it opens up into a video and it walks you through how to use it. That's an onboarding experience and continuing to talk to them about that product a week, two weeks down the road so that you can better understand how it is benefiting them. That's the way you're going to get testimonials. If you continue you've followed up after you've given them time to consume it what and asking questions. What was your favorite recipe? What tip did you find so helpful? Which flower were you surprised you could actually make at home to be vegan and gluten free? These need to be in your onboarding sequence. And I say sequence, it's called different things in different providers. I obviously use ConvertKit. Many of you have heard me talk about it. But it's that email sequence or series of emails that comes after someone has purchased something. You want to have a couple in there so that they can have that right away, that great, almost VIP experience. So think about your onboarding before you even promote it and start launching it. The next piece is to create a marketing plan for promoting it. This can't just be, oh, it's launched and you go hush, 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 hush. <laughs> you have to talk about it. You got to put it out there. It needs to be out on your your um, blog and your website. It needs to be on your social media. What is it going to look like and how are you actually going to market it? So think about, are you going to use influencer or affiliate marketing? I gave the example before of the spices. If you are also a food blogger that has created your own set of spices, it is super smart to then any of the other food bloggers that you have created a relationship with to ask them to be part of an influencer campaign that maybe creates recipes or talks about them in Instagram stories or an affiliate. Having an affiliate relationship with others that have that same audience as you is a great plan of action. The other piece as far as the marketing plan is to know your sales emails. What is that going to look like? Like I said, you can't just be quiet about launching something. If you're going to launch it, you should have a series of sales emails and they should be telling people how it solves their problem, answering any questions they have. And if you have testimonials from people that have already used the product, that should be shared in there as well as one of the emails in the series. You have to know what that is going to look like. It needs to be mapped out. You need to have an idea what days it's going to come and what exactly those emails are going to say. The next piece of that marketing plan is going to be the social media plan. What are, how are you going to promote it there? Are you just going to randomly put up one post on Facebook and call it a day? Or are you going to do stories and are you going to put it on your feed and are you going to pin it and are you going to whatever works best for you and your audience? If your audience isn't on Instagram, then these examples don't even work. But if your audience is there, then you need to have a plan in mind. Have it mapped out so that when the time comes to launch, you're not overwhelmed and wondering, how am I going to get this all done? Now, there's a couple things I want to leave we, leave you with before I tie all of this into a perfect little bow for you. It's that sometimes you need to jump in and refine as you go. This is not meant to be perfect. Many of you have heard me you say the expression, fail forward. 
as long as you fail and you learn from it, then you have failed forward. You can get up. You can be resilient. You can continue to move forward and learn from the mistakes that you have made. The other thing I want you to keep in mind with this is that you can't be everywhere, especially if you are doing this on your own. You are a solopreneur. You do not have a team helping you. You need to pick and choose what you're going to be able to handle. So maybe when you first launch, if influencer marketing or affiliate marketing isn't going to be part of the how you're going to promote. But having a series of sales emails and social media is. I named a bunch of social media platforms. Like I said before, if your audience isn't on those platforms, why would you waste time promoting on it? Why would you do a Facebook Live inside one of your Facebook groups that you know is dead? It's not going to help you. You're wasting and spinning your wheels on something that isn't actually going to benefit you. So I know that Facebook Lives work for some people and inside their groups especially, but do you have a group that's engaged like theirs? Would it work for your audience? Test it out prior to trying to launch. Just go live in your group and see what happens. Any of the things that you're talking about, you should be doing ahead of time. You can't just launch and all of a sudden expect that you're going to put all the bells and whistles on everything. And all of a sudden people are going to pay attention because if they haven't been seeing your content because you haven't done any of this in the past, they're not going to see it now because they've never engaged on anything. And something to keep in mind is, as I've said many, many times to so many of you, people need to see things seven times before they will take any action. So you have to continually be talking about it. And it doesn't need to be in a way like, buy my book, buy my book, buy my book. We're not like roll, you know, out on the corner whipping around the arrow that points to buy my book. But I'm going to talk about my book every once in a while. I'm going to use an example so that if you're listening and you haven't bought my book, you're like, oh, wait a second, she's got a book? I remember her talking about that. I didn't buy it during the launch. Let me go buy her book. It puts it in front of your mind. It's not something that's getting pushed constantly like, buy now, buy now. It's just little connections, little suggestions leading you towards it. There are so many ways that you do that. And half the time, I don't even remember that I do it. Even just now in this episode, not only did I talk about my book, I also talked about my opt-ins, which was a little bit more like make sure that you go grab it. Like I was very upfront with you about that. But I also talked about clients. Many times I'm giving you examples because coaching is something that I do. I offer coaching services. And instead of me saying, sign up for coaching, fill out your application today, I'm going to give an example of a coaching client and what they have been able to do in their business. And it's that subtle way of putting it in the back of your mind. Oh, yeah, she's offers coaching. So you're going to do the same thing. You're going to have your ebook and on stories, you're going to be making one of the recipes and you're going to say, this is one of my favorite recipes from my new ebook. And then you can say anything about, do you want the recipe? Do you want more information about the ebook? It's those subtle little ways that people will pick it up. They will start to register as you say these things that seven times right around there is when all of a sudden you're going to get a random DM from someone and go, wait a second, do you offer an ebook that can give me gourmet recipes done easy? Because I kind of remember you talking about that, but I can't remember. That's where it happens. And it's not when you're buy it now and it's part of the launch and it's this big production. So when it comes to talking about your content and the products and services that you're doing online, make sure that you're doing it in a way that's just authentically you. Because here's the biggest thing I need you to understand about launching a product and actually selling it. This goes more to the selling piece. People have to like, know, and trust you. People are not going to buy things because you had the perfect funnel and the perfect launch if they don't know you. They don't trust you. They're not going to buy it. So if you try to hide behind your website and don't ever show your face or ever write emails from a personal standpoint of talking about what it is that you're doing, they're not going to feel connected to you. And here's the other thing I want you to keep in mind. When you launch your first product or service, It's likely going to take some time to sell because you've never asked for money. Many of you listening have always done things through sponsored content, which is fabulous. And I'm going to tell you right now, 2021 is going to be unbelievable for sponsored content. 
And you've done things for ads with page views, right? You're a part of an ad network, you're part of Mediavine or Ad Thrive or whoever it might be. And you've just offered free content and never asked for a sale. There's nothing wrong with that. That is a great way to make money. Did it. <laughs> but if you're going to diversify and create your own product or service, you have to obviously ask for the sale. And they're not going to be used to that in the beginning. That doesn't mean that they're not going to like you or they're going to stop reading your blog because you asked for a sale. The purpose behind a sale, behind a product or service is they get it all in one place. I actually just had a client ask me today about this. Well, if it part of my ebook is actually on my website, what's the value? The value is it's all in one place. I've told you guys before, you can find a lot of my course material for Pitch Perfect Pro and for Launch Pro on my website and in my podcasts, but it's not laid out strategically, which as many of you know, is my zone of genius. I'm able to walk you step by step on how to do something. You're not going to get that from the website. You will get it by paying the money for the course or service, which is exactly why they will buy your ebook. It's all in one place. They can save it on their phone. They can save it on their computer. They can print it out if they want to. And if it's a course or a workshop or a video, they can go back to it as many times as they want to be able to get a refresher. You need to make sure that you keep that in mind and don't just fall into yourself and, and quietly ask for the sale. No, you need to have confidence. And again, the only way that confidence comes into play and you actually have confidence is if it's practiced. You are not born with confidence. Many of you that have read my book know that I talk a lot about confidence in there. It is not something you are born with. It is a muscle. You have to actually work at it. And as you do it, you get more confident. So don't be afraid of the sale. Don't be afraid to talk about it. Be yourself. And I'm telling you, products and services are a phenomenal way to hit your projection goals for 2021 and to grow your revenue streams and your business. You guys, I appreciate you all so much. As always, I want to make sure that you go and grab the product starter guide so that if you are thinking about a product or service, you're able to really work through what that would look like. As always, if you have not left a reading or review on your favorite podcasting app, I would so appreciate it. It truly, truly helps me to get on other podcasts to be able to have great guests come on. We've had some amazing guests over the course of the past three months. So I really, really want to let you know that I appreciate those who have filled out a rating review because it has helped for them to see those rating and reviews and go, okay, this is an established podcast. For are listening. I will definitely go on that podcast. So I appreciate it. And if you have not, please feel free to. I would so appreciate it. All right, guys, until next time, I will see you all then. 